So instead of using my camera so I can have both hands free, I'm using my computer to videotape this. So what we are looking at right now is I had potatoes on one side and orange skins on the other. And I really do need both hands to do this. So I'm going to set down those post-it notes here and I'm going to lift this up and show you guys. So. There we go. I don't easily see any worms, but we're going to dig through and I'm going to set them on these paper towels and see how many worms we find and go from there. So I'm digging up where the potatoes are. I guess another thing we could do, I um, hadn't really thought about it until right now, is I could measure how many potatoes, like try to take out the potatoes too and see if uh, there are fewer potatoes than there were before. So, so far I'm up to, oh, that worm's trying to get away. Might have to get different containers for the worms to go in so they don't crawl away too fast as we're doing this. So I'm up to three so far. Now, when I showed you the setup of this video, we had put 10 worms into this container and in truth after I got off I realized I had a bunch more worms so I put another two so there were a total of 12 worms in here okay and right now I only found three over by the potatoes and I'm really trying to turn this over many times okay I'm now going to check in the middle I'm going to check in the middle. Oh, well, this was really close to the potato, so that one still counts as potato. Oh, this one is in the middle. Definitely had one, two, not near potatoes, not near the oranges. So that's another thing to think about. If you're going to do an experiment like this, you want some really hungry worms. So another thing we could have tried, and I've mentioned this before, that sometimes a lot of science is trial and error, seeing what works and then change it up. So if I were to do this again, I would actually have the worm sitting for about three days without any food so that then they would be really hungry and they would make a choice one way or the other. Okay, now I'm digging over by the orange skins. I've got one, two, three, Now, I'm not giving any conclusions. We're just making observations. Okay, I saw another one. Where'd he go? Four. Five. I hope everyone remembers the count of the other because they're crawling away on me. <laughs> The benefit of having a video, I could always play it back. Six. Okay, my hands are kind of messy. I really don't want to touch my computer to lift up the camera for you guys to see, but I will do it. Okay, so potato. Let's make sure none are on the floor. Nope. Okay. Hmm, looking for another clean paper towel. All right, gotta clean my computer after this. Okay, so I'm hoping you have a good angle there. Okay, I have orange skins. There were six worms by the orange skins. I had two in the middle, and I think that left me with one, two, three, four over by the potatoes. Just observations, no analysis. Anyway, um, I could also put all the worms back and we could check again in a few days, or we could just say, you know what, we'll just check all of the foods after one day and see what kind of results we have. Knowing that if we were to set it up again, we could do it with three days of seeing what kind of results. So yeah, the worms are moving around. They wanna go back in the soil. So I'm going to let them go back 
um, that you guys please write in your journal what your observations were. Okay, so it's hard to tell because it was a blip in your computer screen, but here I am now on day three since we set up this experiment. So um, we did look at it day one. It didn't seem like the worms had moved that much. Um, so I'm definitely realizing, and I realize this some of the other food experiments, is that one, I probably should have not fed the worms for three days so that then they'd be hungry. And at which point then we could see what they liked over the other. However, that's not how we initially set it up. So we're going to work with what we had and see if now at least leaving them for three days, if that might give us some more meaningful results. So let's see. I didn't give up on our initial setup. But as I've stated other times, sometimes that's what science is, trial and error. Not everything works out the way you expect. So you have to think about it. Hmm, what could I have done differently? Maybe my expectations were totally wrong. And that's okay. So again, potatoes on the one side, onion, oh, onion, orange skin on the other. I'm going to dig through the potatoes. And I thought we had some last time. I don't recall. I'm hoping you're keeping notes in your journal. I do end up keeping track of it later on too. Um, but right now I'm so messy that I am not uh, writing in my journal. Kind of and say this is my video journal. Anyway, so I'm up to three so far that I'm getting... Helping me find them too? Yeah? Oh, thank you. Don't eat of me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so I found three in the potatoes, and I found, or on the side of the potatoes, not in the potatoes. One, two, three, four, five that were over by the orange skins. Again, that's interesting because I had, I was so sure about 12 worms in here. So, um, oh, okay, here we go. Here's another one that was by the potatoes. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to find them. Okay. Okay. But that's about it. So it seemed about equal. I had, um, what did I just say? Four by the potatoes and five by the orange skins. Two. Yep, that's what I got. So I do want to put them now in a different container, possibly to use them again and keep them away from my cat, who's getting very curious. <laughs> that could totally mess up an experiment. Don't you even think about using it like a litter box. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you guys have information um, and we're going to have to analyze this and see what it all means. if. It means anything. I'll see you guys later.